Hi everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this episode, we're going to be starting our playthrough of Dead of Winter, but I want to do something pretty special this time around. I want to put you guys in charge of this group of survivors. So Andrea and Luke are going to be joining me. They'll have their own group of survivors as well, but I'll be here to basically fulfill the wishes that you have collectively for the group of survivors you're about to be introduced to. Luke and Andrea are going to join me and introduce you to their survivors as well. We're also going to talk about the objective for this playthrough, and of course you'll see the secret objective that you have. But first I wanted to mention in the instructional video for how to play Dead of Winter, I failed to mention that when you have a survivor attack another survivor and a wound is caused, you also get to randomly take a card from their hand. I put a note about that in the description of the video and an annotation, but in case you missed that, I apologize and hopefully now that's cleared up. But now let's take a look at the objective for the scenario we're about to play. The setup is pretty simple. Morale and the round tracker are going to start at six and we add one zombie to every non-colony location. But then it's all downhill from there. The victory condition is that every time we kill a zombie, we roll a six-sided die. Four, five, or six allows us to place a zombie token on this objective, which will need a total of nine tokens in order for the objective to be completed. So along with managing the well-being of the colony, we have zombies to kill and samples to collect. So this objective is going to put us in real peril, because every time we attack one of these zombies, and we're clearly going to have to attack zombies, you roll the exposure die. And that means our survivors could be taking wounds, getting frostbitten, or even infected. So how do we end up in this terrible situation? Let's read the story text and find out. January 25th. As if the colony needed to smell even worse. Now we're storing corpses in the sheds where we once kept our plentiful food stores. God, what I wouldn't give to taste a carrot again. You know who has her bossy boots on once more. I didn't like doctors before the world ended, and I don't like them now. She says studying the bodies might help her identify how to stop the plague. Yeah, right. Better to spend time figuring out the quickest, cheapest way to commit suicide. But whatever. Everyone else is excited to help, and maybe that's the real value in this little project. Because all this research will do is tell us what we already know. The dead come back and try to eat you. whoop de freaking do Still, if Her Royal Highness does come up with a cure, I'd better be first in line to get it. Okay, so our story is starting to come together here, but I also wanted to share with you guys an explanation for how each of our different pairs of survivors came together. I thought we could come up with our own stories. My only concern was with Luke. He's 10 years old. I wasn't sure if he was gonna find this easy to do or not. So last night I asked him, I said, you know, what do you think? What would be the story here? And when he started with, well, I think Herman is in his mid 40s. When he was describing it at that level, I thought, okay, he's gonna be fine. Carmen, who was in his early 40s, was closing up the park and recalled that he saw some strange animals with bite marks on their neck. Suddenly, he sees something moving in the shadows. He goes over to investigate and sees nothing. He thought, oh, it's probably just a squirrel. And then he turns around and sees somebody that's dressed up like a ninja. The ninja says, my name is Mike Cho. My family has died because of the zombies. Please help me survive. So Harmon the park ranger agreed to help. Now, although you'll be controlling these two survivors, I'm here, so I thought I would come up with a story for you. James Myers is a psychiatrist, and he's been working for many years, very good in his field. And he's had a number of very colorful patients, but perhaps none so as eccentric as Forrest Plum, the mall Santa. Forrest is really a sad case, to be honest. Whenever the children sit on his lap at the mall, he usually launches into a story of how the elves are going to raise the dead to feast on the children while they sleep. And obviously the parents frown on this, and so Forrest has been fired from job after job. But he really believes this to the core of his being, and he's trying to help. He's trying to warn the children and their parents. James has taken Forrest on as a very special case, spent hours and hours with him, and has finally been making some really significant progress here, and has started, I think, to help Forrest out of this terrible delusion. Then the undead rose and did start feasting on children and parents alike. And now, 
Forrest's predictions, wild and crazy as they seem, have come true. And James, he doesn't know what to think about all this. And so the two of them have been working together ever since, trying to make some sense out of all of this madness. I also need to share with you guys our secret objective. Let's take a look. What do you do when an insane man whose insane ideas become normal for the state of the world? You search for an alternative rational explanation. And that's exactly what James intends to do. You are the betrayer. You need to get morale to zero and have at least two survivors in your following and two medicine and two tool cards. Although I dealt the secret objective cards out randomly, I did ensure that we got the betrayal card. You guys are working together as a group. You have a slight advantage. I wanted to try to balance that out a little bit, but don't worry, your secret is safe with me. But Andrea also needs to share her story for how her survivors came together. Let's listen in. You may not know this, but there's actually a small airport in this town. Sophie is one of two head pilots. She's kind of a workaholic. She didn't even come home for Christmas at all. She's gotten a lot of phone calls and texts from her family members. And recently, her brother's condition has gone from bad to worse. Earlier today, her sister-in-law, Maria, gave her a call. She asked Sophie to come down to the hospital for just a few hours because she's worried that her husband, Sophie's brother, this might be his last few hours. She arrived at the hospital. She got to the room, opened the door, saw Maria and other family members there. Her brother had just passed. But that's when things started to get even crazier. The outbreak happened. Maria and Sophie barely got out alive. What happened next? You'll just have to wait and see. And finally, we're all seated together at the table. I've been joined by... Luke Smith. And... Andrea. Now, before we get started, a couple other things we need to do. The first player token. This is going to go to the player who has a survivor with the highest influence as their leader. 30. 30, and who's your leader? Uh, Mike Cho, the ninja. Right, well, I have James Myers, the psychiatrist. He's got an influence of 54. And Andrea... Has 58, <laughs> Sophie Robertson, the pilot. All right, so you are going to be the first player. I also have one more little surprise that I didn't tell either of these guys about, and you're finding out just now as well. In this game, there are two modes you can play in, regular and hardcore. I thought we'd maybe just kick things up a notch and play in hardcore mode. You'll find that on the other side of the main objective. Let's take a look. Now the round tracker is going to start at five, and we add three zombies to all non-colony locations instead of just one. And to complete the objective, we need to have samples from four zombies for each player. So a total of 12, not nine like before. Okay, so are we up for this extra challenge? Of course. So. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know what to think. We'll find out. I haven't played any of these scenarios on the hardcore level, so I don't know what we're getting ourselves into. But to start the game, the very first thing we need to do is... We need to reveal a crisis that's, card. That's right. And what have we got? Exhaust... Ex <laughs> ex ex exhaustion. Exhaustion. So this tells us we need to contribute three medicine cards, or we're going to have to place one frostbite wound on five non-exiled survivors with the highest influence. Now this sounds bad, but don't forget... If we resolve the crisis with an additional two medicine cards, then not only will we avoid the crisis, we'll also gain one morale. Okay, so the next thing is we need to roll our action dice. And I got two, two, and one. <laughs> What'd you get, Luke? Wait, I got better. Five, six, but one, one. All right, that's, that is better. What, what'd you well, get? Well, I got five, five, four. Okay, you both outrolled me. Shocking. Okay, now it is the player turns phase. Luke. <laughs> Luke. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> I even pointed at you as I said it. Andrea, I do. It's been so long since you've been yeah, here. I know. I'm not used to you being right beside me. Andrea, you get to go first because you have the first player token. Yes. What do you want to do first? I'm going to take my character, Maria. Yes. To the school. Okay. My special action requires that I spend an action die, so I'm going to spend the four. So the reason that I'm moving Maria to the school is because her special ability is that once per round, you may kill a zombie at the school. 
and you don't have to roll for exposure. But you do have to roll for exposure for moving to the school. Yep. Oh, I'm off safe. to a good start. And one zombie's done. Now that I've killed the zombie, I take a random die, and I'm going to have to roll it, and hopefully I'll get a four, five, or six to get a zombie sample. Oh, six. wow, perfect. So I take one of the little zombie tokens, and I'm just going to put it, we're just going to keep track of them right there. Yeah, that's a good idea. We need to get 12 of these, but hey, listen, we only need 11 now. Hey, what, what about, about the crossroads, crossroads cards? cards? I knew I was going to forget this eventually, but I didn't think I'd forget the very first turn. The player to the right of Andrea, Luke, you would get this crossroad card to read. Now, if it's already happened, you'll have to let us know. No. No? Okay, well, that's good then. So it's not going to change anything that we've done so far. But you're watching out for this happening, yes. right? Okay. Andrea, back over to you. Okay. What's your next action going to be? I'm going to use an action die to search at the school. Okay. I'll keep that, and I'm going to I use hope it's my medicine. <laughs> other action die to search again. All right. Is it Kay. medicine? I'm going to equip the card that I just drew. What is it? What is it? It's called School Blueprints. Ooh. Equip. Once per round, when performing a search at the school with the survivor, you may look and keep an additional card. Oh, that's awesome. So you can, yeah. like, plow through that school deck a lot quicker yeah okay very good okay andrea well what else are you going to do you're out of action dice would you consider feeding the colony that's exactly what i'm going to do good speaking of which i should let you guys know right now the best i could do would be to add one food what about you luke two food okay well that's actually pretty good three food <laughs> wow we're eating good tonight okay so those go into the waste pile and we'll add Three tokens to the food supply. Anything else you want to do for your turn? That's it. What about medicine? You want to add some medicine? I don't have any. What do you think? Do you think she's telling the truth? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> we'll believe you for now. For now. Okay, so this Let's crossroad... Put three food in. You did. You did. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You did do your part. Because so, you want to survive because you're betraying us. But you just want to you're suspicious of her, are you? Yeah. Already. I'm suspicious of you. Oh, dear. Why? Accusations you. flying left and right already. Oh, park ranger. Park rangers are evil. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, ninja, though, is a little are suspicious. Evil. Oh, come on. His family died. Look at this lovely... <laughs> Poor Mall Santa. No that everybody wants to get rid of. <laughs> His special ability is at the beginning of my turn, I can remove him from the game to raise morale. <laughs> That's how terrible he is. Are you serious? Yes. Anyway, so Luke, that crossword, I just put it underneath here. It didn't resolve, right? No. Okay. It didn't resolve. Well, guess what? Now it's your turn. Before your turn starts, though, dum, dum. does this resolve right now? No, but it could in the future. Okay. Well, this is where I turn it over to you. I'm going to show you guys the dice I have, the items I have in my hand, and of course the board as it is right now. And then I want you in the comments below to put what you think James and Forrest Plum should be doing during their turn. If you like what someone has suggested, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like it, propose your own suggestion, and maybe some people will vote for that. Whichever one gets the most votes, that's what we'll come back and do. But let me tell you something. I really would like to see people put a little bit of narrative storytelling into your suggestions. Yes, and I might please. just go and pick one. Suddenly, I... Forrest Plum decided to give himself away so everybody could be happy for the rest of their life. <laughs> that is probably a suggestion that these two would like. I'm not sure. No, to... I think he's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm not ready to lose him just yet. But if it comes to it, you know, maybe he's going to have to leave. But anyway, you guys, you guys pick out what you think. And, and I might go with the one that gets the most votes. But unless, unless someone does something really creative, in which case that might sway me as well. We'll see. But until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.